Man, I am excited about this milestone, mainly because it's behind me. The interior closeout panels are done. And I wasn't gonna make a video about this just because I was heads down working. I did get some shots, so this video may be a little bit choppy, I apologize. But, you know, I figured why not make the video that I wish I had going into this process? Not because I'm proud of my workmanship. You all know me. At best, I'm an incredibly average builder. But because there's no instructions on this in the text manual, you will see some mistakes for sure, and hopefully you can improve upon my workmanship. But it'll show you kind of the order in which I do things, as well as some little techniques I use, just like uh, making this little guy right here. And you know my deal. With most of my videos, there's a long form and a short form version. Enjoy. We're not going to get to the seats in this episode because I didn't get any footage, really. And they went together pretty straightforward. I primed, painted, and clear coated the um, these so it looks a little bit sharper. Let's talk about where to start in this kind of phase of the build. Assuming that you're done with the rear baggage floor and the station four closeout, the next place to start would be the header tank. Okay, the trick with the header tank that I found is knowing when to screw in the fittings. I think I had the front fitting on and potentially the bottom fitting on, but not the rear two. Um, you're not gonna get it past the station three bar to fit it in. Then once that's in, then you can screw those in. Then once you're done with the header tank, then this really requires no 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 effort whatsoever. It just kind of fits in. I bent this uh, and then also bent right here and it's fitting really, really nicely. Get that riveted in um, after you get in some nut plates there and there. Then you wanna start working on the forward baggage floor, which I have out right here so that you can see what I did. I definitely strayed from the instructions here. Rand says you don't need these two stiffeners right here because it could sit on top of the tank just fine. But I wanted the added structure. Yeah, it's gonna be added weight, but my dog's gonna be back there. I don't want him pushing on this thing and having it, you know, kind of bend down onto the, the fuel tank. So put in some piano wire, I made the battery access door just to be able to not not replace or remove the battery whatsoever, just, just to access it for charging. Okay, rather than remove the whole floor, which is pretty easy, but you know, there's gonna be weeks on end when I don't fly and I just wanna hook it up without taking the floor off. Okay. So once that is done, now you wanna move over to the side panels and then work your way kind of back. On with the rest of the build video. You'll get what I'm saying as you see me build. And we're gonna pull the plane out and reorganize so we can get the engine on the front end and end of this thing because it's showing up real, real soon. And while the plane is out, we're gonna turn on the avionics and see if we can't get the first GPS signal for the GA35 antenna into the GNX375. So this is a hydraulic line and it was the problematic part that ultimately lost an F-15 over DC, we were capping and a young lieutenant uh, got a utility A light which transitioned to utility B which transitioned to full hydro utility hydraulic failure which turns a land as soon as practical into a land as soon as possible, diverted into Andrews Air Force Base. Uh, can't get into a lot of the details there, but ultimately the landing gear collapsed and uh, live missiles on board and whatnot. Uh, radome came falling off, the guy didn't eject. It was fine, he ran away from the jet, but that, we have a, <laughs> we had a name for that aircraft because it had a lot of hydraulic issues. I won't, I won't, uh, won't get into the name of the jet, but uh, fun to find that little part and relive some old F-15 stories. I think on this channel, I'll start uh, telling more fighter pilot stories. What do you think? Oh, the reason I have this part is because I was the interim safety board president and investigated um, this initially and then handed it over to the formal safety investigation board. But uh, it just, it, it like consumed a lot of the last like three months of my my life in the Air Force. But so they memorialized it for me so I can take that joy with me. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Sniffing them. It's sniffing them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Put the window in. Not permanently. 
Oh yeah, initial acquisition, baby. Bro, thanks so much for your help. This was amazing. So I think I showed you a little bit about this plate, it's just covering up some of the other holes that I'm not using and filed it down. I think this is a great application for maybe a, a CNC send cut send, but I just wanted to kind of get it done. Back to soldering and wiring, which I know it sounds weird, but it is my favorite part of this build. Kobe says hi. Whisper. Good, now speak. Good, good boy. Now that the rotor cable closeout out is in, I'm working on Match drilling in the corner. <laughs> Check it out. Pilatus. And then, ooh, move your hand for a sec. C17, look at that. That's, that's that way. It's pretty sweet. Pilatus. That one's the C5, by the way. C5, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, wow, check you out. You're exactly right. That's pretty unmis- Mr. Aviator. <laughs> uh, question me. Oh, by the way, the Pilatus also doubles as this is the fuel shutoff valve and I want to talk about something so in my kit it was revision B okay currently on the latest uh, it's November of 2022 um, they're on revision C and in revision B this was flush mounted to these tanks okay you can see I have some washers in there Revision C um, has spacers, and they also, they don't rivet it through, they, they screw it in and have a backing nut. And there's the final product. Pretty easy. Okay, so here's this one of the, the plastic side panel. I cut a little slot right there. And what that does is that allows it to slide like that. It'll fit pretty well. Okay, the closeouts are in. I wouldn't say final, I mean, they're final uh, fit up, uh, but I do need to take them out just for ease of finishing off this build, connecting up fuel lines and whatnot. But everything is working and fitting pretty good. So I'm moving on to the rudder cable closeout. So far, everything in this kit has been Imperial standard sizes. Uh, this is the first thing I found that's metric. This is a 10 millimeter nut. This thing just kind of protects it, pops out, pops on. But clearly you need to remove this handle if you want to take this piece off. This is sitting in here really nicely. Uh, there's a little bit of adjusting that I want to do. Trim some of the tabs so they're not sitting on the structure in there so it sits a little bit nicer. But I don't have time to do that right now. I got to run off to a trip. Um, and I'm going to Hawaii twice bragging, but uh, bringing a couple of GoPros, the new Hero 11 and Hero 11 Black Mini to review uh, in some fun environments and vibrant colors. So look for that coming soon. I'll leave the link right there. I hope this video met the objective, which is not to show you how to do it, not to show you a perfect job of how to do it, but to show you an average job and the order in which to do things because if because I really wish uh, that there was a video to guide me, but I kind of muddled through it. And so I'm hoping to save you a little bit of time. And also you can really improve upon, pretty easily improve upon uh, my job. But thanks again to Andrea for her help on this uh, portion of the build. I'm really excited once we finish this next week, we're gonna get the wings up on the table, finish off the fuel tanks and the Aerosport products carbon wing tips. Until next time, you're clear to wreck.